Meet the author and the illustrator. Virginia Hamilton was born in Yellow Springs, Ohio, in the United States. She was part of a large African-American family. Growing up, Virginia was a good student. In fact, she was first in her high school class. Later, she attended Antioch College and the Ohio State University. Virginia wrote 41 books during her career. One book, The Planet of Junior Brown, was made into a movie. Simeon Shimon was born in Russia. He moved with his family to the United States when he was 10 years old. Later, Simeon studied with different artists. He went to school. He traveled through Europe. He has painted murals or huge paintings on walls. He has illustrated more than 50 children's books. From Zeely. Zeely tells about a young girl and her brother as they visit their uncle's farm. They fed a bit of corn to Uncle Ross's 200 leghorn chickens. They could feed them as much corn as they liked, Uncle Ross had said. And they could gather up eggs whenever they had a mind to. Well, it's the truth. I can do whatever I want, Geeter said to herself. Still, not one thing had taken place that fit with her father's words. And now I leave it all to you. That was why when evening came, Geeter decided to spread sheets and blankets out on the front lawn. She and Towboy would sleep outside and maybe they would see a comet. Towboy liked looking up into the sky as long as Geeter was talking. The sound of her voice made the night less strange and he felt safe. He had made his bed partly beneath a sprawling lilac bush, close to the house. Geeter had made hers near the high hedge that shielded the house from the road. Towboy felt so good that he decided to get up and make his bed next to Geeter's. I think I'll come over there, he called to her. Better not, she said. Just better stay where you are. But I want to sleep by the hedge, too, he said. I know one thing, Geeter said. Late at night in the country, night travelers walk along dark roads. What? Night travelers, Geeter said again. And they usually come up when you're just about asleep. What kind of things are they? Asked Towboy. He dug his legs deeper among the branches of the lilac bush. I'll tell you this, Geeter said. If you see one, you better close your eyes fast and dive as far under the covers as you can go. They don't like kids watching them. In fact, they don't like anybody watching them. Towboy stayed uneasily beneath the lilac bush. He was glad to be so near the house, for if he heard any sound, he could race inside. He did not mind at all seeing half stars and a half moon through the lilac leaves. Gator turned around to see what Towboy was doing and saw that he had pulled most of his bedding all the way under the lilac shrub. That nearly made her laugh out loud. She had made up the whole thing about the night travelers. She was only trying to frighten Towboy, not for any really mean reason, but just because he was little and was easy to scare. As far as she knew, 
Nobody walked late at night along this dark road. A chill passed up her spine, and she closed her eyes tight for an instant to make it go away. Toboy? She called. Are you still awake? I'm awake. He said. I don't want to sleep yet. He lay fingering the cool leaves of the lilac. Then I'll tell you all about stars, said Geeter. Since you're so wide awake. Geeter talked about the stars in the night. She knew Toboy had gone to sleep when he no longer asked her anything or chuckled about what she said. A long time passed. Geeter dozed and awoke with a start. The grass beyond the tip of her toes was wet with dew. She pulled the blankets more tightly around her, tucking her feet safely inside. She had closed her eyes again when she heard a rustling sound on Leapback Road. Some wild animal, she thought. The sound grew louder, and she could not think what it was. Suddenly, what she had told Toboy flashed through her mind. Night travelers! She dove under the covers. But something's happening, she told herself, poking her head out again. It took all her courage to crawl out of the covers and a few feet over the wet grass up to the hedge. She trembled with fear, but peeked through the hedge in spite of it. What she saw made her bend low, hugging the ground for protection. Truthfully, she wasn't sure what she saw. The branches of the hedge didn't allow much of a view. Something tall and white was moving down the road. It didn't quite touch the ground. Gator could hear no sound of footsteps. She couldn't see its head or arms. Beside it and moving with it was something that squeaked ominously. The white, very long figure made a rustling sound when she held her breath. It passed by toward town. Geeter watched, moving her head ever so slowly until she could no longer see it. After waiting for what seemed hours, quaking at each sound and murmur of the night, she crept back to bed, pulling the covers over her eyes. She lay cold and scared unable to think and afraid even to clear her dry throat. This way, she fell asleep. She awoke in the morning refreshed, but stiff in every muscle. Peter lay for a moment watching mist rise from the pink sweet clover that sprinkled the lawn. The air smelled clean and fresh and was not yet hot from the sun. I've got to decide, she whispered. In the stillness, the sound of her own voice startled her. She turned carefully around to see if Toboy had stirred. The tangled bedding deep in the lilac bush did not move. If I tell Toboy about the night traveler, she whispered, he might not want to sleep outside anymore. Just think of it. Not more than a few hours ago, an awful spooky thing walked by here. Eater wasn't at all sure she wanted to sleep outside again herself. Goodness knows what a night traveler will do if it sees you watching. Maybe I'd better tell Uncle Ross. Maybe I shouldn't. Eater knew it would take her a while to figure out what course to take. Almost any minute now, the people Uncle Ross rented land to would come down the road. Uncle Ross had said they came every morning as soon as the sun was well up in the sky. It was just about time, and watching them would be something to do. When her dew-soaked blankets grew warm from the sun, Geeter whistled for Towboy as softly as she could. Turning around, she saw one eye peek out from the lilac bush. Wake up, Toboy, she whispered loudly. I think I hear them coming. Toboy.
boy leaped up before he looked where he was going and hit his head against the branch. Leaves spilled dew all over him. He was wet and still half asleep when Geeter yanked him to the ground before they could be seen. They knelt low by the hedge, trying not to move or blink an eye. They watched Mr. Tabor and his daughter come into view along Lee Back Road. What they saw was no ordinary sight. They watched spellbound, for nothing in the world could have prepared them for the sight of Miss Zeely Tabor. Zeely Tabor was more than six and a half feet tall, thin and deeply dark as a pole of Ceylon ebony. She wore a long smock that reached to her ankles. Her arms, hands, and feet were bare, and her thin, oblong head didn't seem to fit quite right on her shoulders. She had very high cheekbones, and her eyes seemed to turn inward on themselves. Geeter couldn't say what expression she saw in Zeely's face. She knew only that it was calm, that it had pride in it, and that the face was the most beautiful she had ever seen. Zeely's long fingers looked exactly like bean pods left a long time in the sun. Geeter wanted to make sure Toboy noticed Zeely's hands, but the tabers were too close and she was afraid they would hear her. Mr. Tabor and Zeely carried feed pails, which made a grating sound. It was the only sound on the road besides that of Mr. Tabor's heavy footsteps. Zeely made no sound at all. You would think she would, thought Geeter. She was so long and tall. Geeter and Towboy stayed quiet as the Tabors passed and the Tabers gave no sign that they saw them hiding there. Uncle Ross had said that they were not known to speak much, even to one another. They had not lived in Crystal always, as Uncle Ross had. Geeter and Towboy watched the Tabers until they went out of sight. It was then that Towboy said, Let's go watch them in the field. No said Geeter quietly. No, Toboy. She could not possibly have made him understand how stunned she had been at seeing Miss Zeely Tabor for the first time. Never in her life had she seen anyone quite like her. Later on, as they fed the chickens, Geeter talked to Toboy about the arrival of the Tabors in Crystal. They must have come early one morning, she told him. They might have come from the west, but I suspect they came from Tallahassee. They brought all their wild animals with them in a wagon train, and they bought that house they live in from Mr. Crawley. How could they come in a wagon train? Toboy wanted to know. Peter was thinking and didn't answer him. Mr. Tabor came down the road to see about using some of the West Field, Geeter said. But why would Uncle Ross rent land to strangers? Towboy asked. Oh, goodness, Towboy, Geeter said. If Uncle Ross waited until he got to know the Tabors the way you know ordinary people, he'd wait forever. Listen. She stood very close to Towboy, as though the chickens might hear, and she didn't want them to. All of Crystal knows only a few things about the Tabers. What things? Towboy asked. Well, they know that Zeely Tabor is awfully tall for a girl. Even that Tabor is very tall. Geeter said. But not too tall for a grown man. What else do they know? Asked Towboy. The Tabers like to be left alone. Geeter said, counting off on her fingers. Seely's mother is dead. Both Nat and Seely have thin noses and very high cheekbones. 
Maybe the Tabers are Indians, Toughboy said. Peter had to laugh. The Tabers are colored people, she said. Just like you and me and Uncle Ross. But they are different from any people I've ever seen. We don't know what kind of person Celie is. Peter's voice was full of the awe she felt for her. But you know what I think? I think we found a new people that nobody's ever heard of. All that morning, Peter talked to Towboy about Celie. When they sat down for lunch with Uncle Ross, Towboy was surprised by the off-handed way Gator asked. How long have those Tabor people been around this town? Oh, it's been about a year and a half now, Uncle Ross said. That's a long time, Gator said. I guess you've gotten to know Mr. Tabor and his girl real well in all that time. Uncle Ross smiled. No, he said. I wouldn't say that. The Tabers aren't easy to know, although they are speaking polite to most folks. What would you say then? Asked Towboy. What would I say when? Uncle Ross replied. Peter wished Towboy would just keep quiet. He means to say that if you don't know them well, then what way do you know them? She asked. And why don't you know them well when they're in the West Field every day working over those animals? Uncle Ross took a careful look at Towboy and a much longer look at Geeter. Towboy means to say all that? He said to Geeter. Well, I mean to say just what I did say. Mr. Tabor and his daughter live to themselves. They stay aloof from the whole town. He paused. One day, the town had no thought of them. The next day, there they were, hammering and putting storm windows in that old house once owned by Jacob Crawley. Just like that? Geeter said, snapping her fingers. No, not exactly like that. Uncle Ross said. Now that I think about it, there had been time, room, for people like them among us. It's like it took them a long time to get here. The first time we see them, they are taking care to fix up that house. Strangers. And they stay on taking their time. Still strangers. That's all right, the way I see it. Strangers, Geeter said. But that was all she said. She asked no more questions. But by nightfall, Geeter was ready to talk about Celie Tabor once more. As she and Towboy lay in their beds on the lawn, she began. You would think a lady like Celie would have all kinds of friends, Geeter said. I mean, being so tall and being so pretty. But there she goes with just old Mr. Tabor. She hardly even talks to him. He doesn't talk much to her either, Towboy said. That's because both Zeely and Mr. Tabor are different, Geeter said. With ways about them, none of us can understand. Towboy lay beneath the lilac bush, hugging the covers around himself. He listened to the rise and fall of Geeter's voice and was lulled into a deep sleep. Geeter stopped talking. She was watching the stars when there grew in her mind a lovely picture. It was daytime, with sunlight spilling over Uncle Ross's farm. She sat in shade on a grassy slope beside Leapback Road. Miss Zeely Tabor came gliding down the road. Her face and arms were shiny from heat and walking so long in the sun. She came right up to Geeter. She had been looking for her. 
Gator, have you waited long? Miss Ely said. I would dearly love a drink of water from the pump room. Gator brought Miss Ely a drink of water in a tall glass and a silk handkerchief. Miss Ely sat beside Gator, sipping the water. She wiped her face with a handkerchief and then dried her hands. When she had finished, she folded the hanky and placed it in Gator's palm. Gator Perry, said Miss Seely. I don't know what I would do without you. Gator pretended she hadn't done anything at all. Miss Seely Tabor, she whispered to the stars. Oh, Miss Seely. Her hand touched something cool and heavy beside her. Uncle Ross's flashlight. She had taken it from his workroom. She meant to shine the light on the night traveler just as it passed by the house. Suddenly alert and watchful, she listened to the silence around her. If the night traveler tries to bother me, I'll throw the flashlight at it, she muttered. And if that doesn't stop it, I'll scream and wake up the whole town. But Gator was tricked by the fresh night air into falling asleep. Many times she roused herself, but did not awaken. Once she said in her sleep, Is that you? Is that you coming? It seemed that a voice came through the hedge, murmuring. Yes, child, now sleep. It was her mother's voice. She slept more calmly then. She dreamed of home and people she knew there. In the morning, she was mad as a bull for having fallen asleep and had no recollection of the dream. As the weeks passed, fine and sluggish, Gator and Towboy fell into a lazy routine. Each morning, they arose early to watch the Tabers come down Lead Back Road. Each night, they talked of Zeely Tabor under the stars. Yet try as she might, Gator couldn't learn anything new about Miss Zeely. She feared all that was to happen had already taken place. Some of the village children got into the habit of stopping by the farm to see if Gator and Towboy wanted to play. Towboy either went off with them or invited them to wade in Uncle Ross's pond. When the children stayed at the farm, Gator hid in the sycamores. I can't think straight about Zeely with them around, she said to herself. She didn't want anyone other than Towboy to know about Zeely until she herself knew more. Many times she had to take Towboy aside to warn him never to mention Zeely to the others. I don't see why, Towboy said. Towboy, if you do, I'll never ever talk to you again. When Towboy ran off to town with the children, Gator waited and floated in the pond. She tried to outdistance the water striders, but the long legs of the striders fairly skimmed over the pond. Often she dug in the earth looking for insects. She found a host of maggots feasting on an apple core. She didn't know they were the larva of flies until Uncle Ross told her. All life changes, Uncle Ross said. Some eggs change into chickens, some worms into butterflies. The way Uncle Ross said what he did made Gator feel strange inside. It's too hot here, she said. I think I'll just get away for a while. She slipped off to a nearby farm where there were fields of wheat and corn. Gator sat down in the middle of a long corn row. She pulled weeds to chew on. Purple morning glories twined up the corn stalks. Their scent mixed with that of the corn silk and the black soil. It's awfully quiet here, she said. She didn't know why, 
but she felt kind of lonely. Everything is just dull. Nothing's any fun anymore. She stayed hidden in the corn until the odor of the morning glories brought yellow jackets on the back of the heat. Gator went to the wheat fields. The wheat closed in behind her as she crept through it. The slightest breeze caused the wheat to whisper and bow. Discuss. One. Early in the summer, Gator and Towboy sleep outside. How does this change Gator's summer? Two. Why does Gator scare Towboy? How do you think this makes Towboy feel?